Gremlins, gremlins, go away, gremlins, gremlins. I don't know the rest of the words to my own song. I forgot them. Sorry about that. They're being very nasty to Tristan today. But have a look what we've got here. This is very sad to see. I can't believe it. A dead hippopotamus in the water. Now, I just visit, visited the cul-de-sac crossing just the other day, and there was no sign of this hippo. But I'm going to go out a little bit here. I know that there is a rather large pod of hippos just to the right. I'm saying to the right because I have to direct myself. Let me go all the way out so we can get a view. So, uh, as you can see, we've got, unfortunately, our hippopotamus laying tummy side up, and then we've got the grey-crowned cranes, and in between are plenty of crocodiles of varying sizes and then on the right hand side of the screen is the pod of hippos i'll take you in over there so i wonder what's happened to this hippo now gromit you're wondering oh gromit gromit you're wondering what type of animal would a crocodile avoid eating i don't think it discriminates i think it can eat anything and everything i mean crocodiles even consider humans as food so Avoid the crocodiles. Don't go swimming with them. I think it's a silly idea. Um, so there's the pot of hippos. So I wonder if this wasn't because of a territorial dispute. It just seems fairly close. And when hippos do fight, they do always fight in the shallow waters. And a number of different occasions when I've been down in this area, just as the sun is sort of set, you hear the grunts and growls that come from a hippo. And I've played hippos, uh, well, the sound of hippos fighting for you. And it sounds like dinosaurs having a go at one another. And it can be quite a severe fight. It doesn't look like a particularly small hippo. Uh, I, I can't see any serious puncture wounds, but also the light is quite harsh um, this morning. And then, of course, it's also lying upside down. But massive teeth, of course, they can kill each other, if, especially if it's two bulls and they're not, you know, one is not saying no, not backing down. But this probably won't be around for, for too long. There's a variety of different animals that will feed on it. Those crocodiles, um, will quite happily share a big meal like this. As you saw, they're also sharing the same bank to bask on. So even though they are territorial, as long as the big croc is happy, the biggest one, and he's got his favorite spot, everybody else will sort of slot in and around him. And then hopefully they'll come and feed on this carcass as well. So I'll keep an eye out for for the, any movement from these animals. Maybe a lion comes down to the water's edge. That could happen too. A leopard, hyenas could come here. Uh, it could be quite an exciting feeding frenzy. Now, Elizabeth, you're wondering if these mighty beasts, the crocodiles, have any uh, predators. Most certainly. Can you see that yellow-billed stalk over there with the crocodiles? When they are small enough, so when they're hatchlings um, and only a couple of weeks old, even just a few months old, that would be a predator of a little crocodile. Unfortunately, humans are a huge threat to crocodiles too because we use their skin for leather. Some people eat crocodile uh, and, and, of course, there's a constant war because there's always conflict between humans and crocs and very sadly when I was working in Zambia it was not an uncommon thing to hear that a local villager was taken by a croc it happened once or twice a week uh, and that's just because of them coming down to the water's edge you know washing their pots and pans or going fishing in mokoros or even just traveling by mokoro which is a basic dugout wooden canoe and they would they pull you straight out of that and crocodiles are clever they learn they sit and watch and if you do the same thing all the time which is the worst thing you can do and fishermen know this you don't fish in the same spot in an area where there's crocodiles because they'll learn and they'll sit and wait for you and eventually come in and, and snatch you. It was always our fishing guides were always so panicked about, even in the big boats, and I've spoke about this a few times, about anybody sitting near the edge of a boat because the crocodiles are massive, just as big as we, we see some of them here on the Mara River. But in, on the Zambezi, you know, an average size crocodile is probably between four and a half and five meters. They are huge. I, very, uh, I saw very few small crocodiles while I was there. And um, yes, they just about swallow you whole they're that big obviously they're not going to swallow you whole but I think this is this particular spot could bring some interesting sighting and it might be worth us maybe going visiting over the next couple of days um, maybe just as the sun starts to set to see if we get any animals come down to feeding on it Now, Scottish, you're wondering if crocodiles shed their skin like monitor lizards? Oh, no, I don't think so. I've never found a, a crocodile skin before. That would be quite scary. Can you imagine? Um, they just sort of stretch and grow um, well, as they carry on with life. But, uh, no, they don't shed their... their I, don't, I must, haven't seen them shedding their skin before. 
No, I, I now I'm confused myself. Shall we check? I'll have to quickly check, but I don't think so. I can't ever remember seeing crocodiles shedding their skin. That would be very cool if they could. Oh, you know what? I wish I had a camera in the studio right now because I have a big spider walking on the window and it looks out and it's, it's, it's quite funny to watch it go up the glass. Right, what else have we got around here? 